All right. Uh, thank you for joining us uh, in hopefully what is calming down and the holiday season. Uh, I'm super excited to talk about today's uh, conversation, uh, which is really the secrets to franchising marketing. Um, my awesome panel, who I'm going to let in, give their own introductions in a second, uh, we'll, we're going to guide you, our audience, through a few things. One, what does it feel like to be the franchisor uh, working with franchisees when it comes to marketing? Then we're going to role play into what does it feel like to be the franchisee working with the franchisor uh, in marketing? Um, then we're going to get into some suggestions or tips and how you can impact your franchise marketing at a local uh, level. Um, Don, let me see if I can fix that. I think it's me. You know, I can hear you. Oh, good. You're good. Great. Okay, okay we're good. So I'm Nick Powells. I'm publisher of 1851franchise.com. If you go to that site, it's designed to give you news and information from everything that's happening in the franchise industry. Um, so this is a topic that we cover a lot, trying to give you, the franchisee, some support on marketing your business at the local level. Um, let's go down my panelist line. Uh, Dawn, you can go first. A little bit on your background. What what makes you uh, credible in this category? And I, I already decided that you're credible, so you're credible regardless. But what makes you credible? And tell us a little bit about your story and background. Oh boy, no pressure. So uh, my name is Dawn Kroger. I'm the marketing and communications director for Two Men in a Truck International franchise moving company, with locations in U.S., Canada, U.K., and Ireland. I have been with the company for 17 years, so I'm hoping that is um, helps me be a little bit credible uh, in, in terms of experience and age. Uh, I started doing local marketing at, for three Michigan franchises as the marketing manager for three and a half years before moving to the corporate office and then uh, joined that team and now have the, the pleasure of leading a very smart and talented and passionate group of 26 marketing professionals. So we work really hard to continue to build the brand for our franchisees, both locally and nationally. Appreciate having you on. Thanks for, thanks for that. And Michelle. Yes. Can you hear me? Yep. We can hear you. Yeah. Great. Wonderful. Well, uh, my name is Michel Lecomte. I'm the CEO of uh, SEO Samba. Uh, we are the maker of the franchise marketing operating system, uh, which is a marketing automation system built specifically uh, for multi-location businesses, including franchise. Uh, we also released a couple of years ago a uh, customer relationship management system. And we just released uh, uh, a few weeks ago a CRM edition for uh, franchise development, right? So we've been working a lot in the franchise in franchising space uh, with from both franchisors and franchisees, multi-unit franchisees, uh, you know, everything digital, you know, uh, social, uh, email, uh, websites, obviously, uh, uh, SEO, PPC, uh, all of the above, um, you know, basically, um, We've seen, a, we've seen a lot there, um, uh, helping everyone uh, finding their bearings in, into this uh, uh, somewhat confusing and fragmented digital world. Great. Thanks, Michelle. Glad to have you on our panel. And Jessica, take us home. Tell us your story. Well, I feel very underqualified compared to the panel that we have. Welcome, everybody. Nice meeting you. Um, I am the director and executive project manager for Payroll Vault, so I wear a lot of different hats. I have a broad background in business development, marketing, communications, and project management. So my main focus with Payroll Vault is to ensure that we have the proper communications and the consistency between sales and marketing um, information that's going out to help support sales for our franchise offices. Great. Thank and that you. is the long and short of it. Hey, that's perfect. That's, that's exactly what we needed to hear. So, um, okay, so let's let's kick into this. Um, and we'll, we'll keep going down the panel, uh, same, same rotation. Uh, so Don, I'm gonna put you on the spot uh, mo most of the time to go first. Um, okay, so let's put ourselves in the shoes of the franchisor. Um, and Th th I think this will help position the why. So when you as a franchisee, if you're, you're out in, in, in your world, in your community, and the franchisor is saying, hey, we have to market your business or you have to spend dollars to get your story out there. Um, 
I want I want to give the franchisee a glimpse into wh- why are we why are we building marketing strategies? Why are we asking them to deploy it? Why are we asking them to spend uh, a percentage of every dollar that comes in on on marketing? Um, so let, let's frame it that way. So Don, do you want to do you want to frame it? Why why are we even building out a twenty six person department to support these franchisees when it comes to marketing? Yeah, that that's a great that's a great uh, segue I think into the. Really, I think it goes back to being a franchisee. And when you join a franchise company, you're looking for the guidance and for historical information on what works and what doesn't. Because if you weren't, you would just start your own Tom's Moving Company, right? But just by saying, saying, I want to sign up to be a franchisee for any business, I believe you're saying, I want to be a part of something bigger I don't want to forge my own way. I want to own a local business with the support of a franchisor. So really for me, I feel like that conversation about strategic marketing comes pretty easily because we're just going to share, here's what we know from 35 years of experience in this moving industry and in customer service. And we know these are the tactics that work to drive leads and build your brand locally. Because we also have, by the way, 300 other locations telling us what works and we're aggregating everyone's information and can scale it. And so I think it's easy to say um, we're going to invest together, especially when there are things that you as a franchisor are bringing that you can scale. So, no, you cannot, as a local franchisee, produce a $250,000 video media spot, but we can we can build that for you with, with your ad fund dollars. And then you can go ahead and place that you're local, where it makes sense for you locally. I think it's just showing the value of how we're partnering on that spend for what we're going to spend out of an ad fund and then what you're going to spend locally and just showing the, the partnership and the results makes it, um, I don't want to say easy, but it makes it simple to show the value, I think. Yeah, I appreciate that. And I think a, a lot of a lot of franchisees, I mean, when you buy into a system, you're, you're buying into a system. So if you're looking or evaluating what franchise brand makes sense for you, you're going to look at the depth of marketing and what what kind of support is gonna come from the the marketing department. Now, there will be brands like Two Men and Truck that can have uh, a a sizable team that is designed to uh, aggregate the data and figure out what works best for you as a franchisee. Um, and then there's going to be brands that, that might not have as big of a marketing team, but maybe they, the, the lead in marketing deploys some of those resources through some agency partners that can also give you guys some scaffolding uh, as well. So, Michelle, over to you. Um, I mean, you, you hear frustrations from franchisors, and part of your solution is to try to organize all this to make it easier, not just for the franchisee, but also for the franchisor. If you're in the shoes of a franchisor, what are your expectations for franchisees? What role should they be playing in the in the marketing at a local level? Oh, Michelle, did we lose you? Look at that, perfectly frozen. Yeah, perfectly. <laughs> this, is, this is where pivoting and flexibility in any Zoom meeting happens. We'll see if Michelle uh, rejoins us uh, in a second. Get that internet going again. So Jessica, let's go over to you. Same, same sort of question. From your standpoint, when you're sitting there trying to uh, articulate to the franchisees with the importance of the support that you're going to give them and the role that you play in making their business stronger, um, what are your opinions uh, on, on doing so? And what, what, what does it feel like to be in your shoes? You know, we are a little bit of a smaller marketing department. So to be able to educate our franchise offices on what we are here to do for them uh, is probably our biggest challenge because they still want to kind of go it their own. Um, Even though we try to educate them, these are the tools that we have in place. These are why we have them in place. These are the best practices. And this is why we have found that these are the best practices. And then we try to have the analytics behind it to kind of small like on a smaller scale to help them understand that information and the return on investment it's not a i'm going to go out and spend fifty dollars on this ad and have all of these facebook leads come in you know understanding what the platforms are how to use them what which ones are the best pay to play and then how to stretch out those marketing dollars especially for the newer franchise offices 
and make it worth your while and still convey the message and um, put your mission out there to your local community. I would say that that is what we love to do is the education piece, but it's probably one um, from a franchise award level, one of our largest um, areas of frustration as well. Yeah, I mean, but look, the reality is fr franchise awards are constantly trying to figure out the best practice too. It's not it's not like they're given the, the complete keys to the car and say that they're, they're the experts. So you, you guys are constantly trying to innovate and adjust and say this worked in the past. Um, do you feel like, can Dawn, to you, do you feel like, do franchisees understand the, the chaos that you're trying to organize in your department? Oh, we got some too much franchisees on here. So I, I don't know. That's a hard one, Nick. <laughs> no, yeah, really, um, it depends. Uh, anyone who has experience in marketing or um, being on a marketing team, or working for a different business with a marketing team definitely understands it. Um, they understand that there are so many moving parts, but then there are of course some franchisees that have no clue about marketing because it's just not what, they, what they're here for, right? It's not why they joined, it's not what they've done before. And that takes a little bit more, especially those big dollar signs, right? When we're talking about awareness advertising, pay-per-click to understand really, I have to spend what? To, to drive leads, don't you just do that for me, you're the franchisor. So it is that kind of education and back and forth. And But we are so fortunate to have uh, so many franchisees that are happy to walk alongside of a new fr new newer franchisee and explain and um, just be transparent and help them understand. So it just depends on the person and you just have to find a way to, to share the communication so everybody understands it. Well, uh, Michelle, I can see I can see the eyes blinking. So I assume the the freezing's done. So let's try this one more time. Uh, to to you, you you sitting in the in the seat that you sit in, you get to hear the franchisors' uh, frustrations, and you're trying to build those into solutions so that the communication between franchisor and franchisee is is sound. From the franchisor perspective. Um, where, where do they stand when it comes to supporting franchisees in their marketing before they even deploy your solution out there? Um, what are, what are, what is your opinion of, of what's going on through their head? Well, it's, it's, it's really all over the place. I mean, it really depends on, on, um, on, uh, on brand. Um, uh, very often, um, the, 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 there is, uh, this, um, uh, well-refined formula uh, when it comes to marketing in the physical world. And then somehow, uh, when it comes to digital, uh, things are a little bit more, a uh, li little bit murkier, right? Um, so as, as, as a carbonated life forms, we, we instinctively better understand the physical world, right? We just have more, more connection to it. So that makes, that makes sense, right? And so, uh, you know, when, when, when I state that your brand marketing is going to benefit from having 100 locations rather than, than just 50, right? I don't need to explain it to you, right? You you. You can un instinctively understand it, um, but th th there is also, you know, you also understand that there is a good chance that your next franchisee is going to, you know, is going to visit actually one, one of your stores right before actually inquiring about the franchise opportunity, for instance, right? So there, there is also franchise development um, uh, uh, benefit, right, to um, um, uh, to, to 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 that uh, to that uh, you know network, right? Um, and then you, you also you know understand that there are you know mitigation. Uh, uh, medication benefit as well, you know, from having larger larger networks. But then, when when it comes to um, to the digital world, somehow, you know, those those benefits from the physical world don't necessarily translate into a formula, right? Offered, you know, as is by the franchisors, and that's where that's where we come in, right? We help essentially craft that formula that that, that can actually deliver on those, you know, network benefits, uh, marketing benefits across across the board, right? So. Um, uh, this can take, you know, different different shapes. Ready, uh, so you know, this can start with, you know, building essentially a, a, a website network. This can take, you know, place in terms of of you know setting up a PPC campaign that can be replicated across the board. Uh, this can be uh, a heartbeat uh, that we can give to the social networks that have been. Uh, 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 just, uh, uh, just not being, uh, not being uh, 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 used at all, you know, by uh, by franchisees. Uh, so really, uh, you know, it, 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 you know, it, th th there are many, many, many gaps uh, that potentially can can appear 
in, in an overall strategy, right? And, and, and so obviously the more you multiply, you know, those digital assets, uh, the more you have to actually feed, you know, push essentially content to the digital, uh, to the digital assets. And it's difficult to do as, as a single location business owner, but even more so when, when you are a franchiser and you have to deal with all those multiple, multiple locations, right? And, and points of presence. Yeah. Okay. So I, I appreciate that. And I think, I think now we have a, a good foundation from a franchisor standpoint where, where we stand. Let's, let's switch over to the franchisee. And, and I want to, I want to give a, a few frames of reference as we, as we kick this off and then Don, Don, we'll go Don, Jessica, Michelle on, on opinions on this. So for, for a franchisee, when, when you buy into a system, um, here, here is your, your challenge. And whether you recognize this or not, uh, you are going to be asked to be an expert in marketing, driving customers in. Uh, before that, uh, site selection in many scenarios, lease negotiations. Uh, you're going to have to become an expert at HR because uh, because a joint employer, you're going to be in charge of hiring and firing your, your employees, uh, which comes along with payroll management um, and everything else that could fall into employee management. Uh, you're going to be in charge of taking that operations manual and taking that manual and putting it to work. So now you're an expert in operations. So when you start when you start breaking down all the things that you as a franchisee are responsible for, in my opinion, part of what you need to, to find is how, how do I find tools or, or resources through my franchisor? And what is their answer when it comes to how do you support me from a marketing standpoint? Because it's very complex to operate a business when all of those jobs fall on your shoulders. And in most cases, the franchisor has dedicated teams for each of those departments. You as a franchisee, especially when you're starting off with one unit, you're not going to have the resources to build out a team that large to now support all those areas. So when you look at a pocket of marketing, now if because of the chaos, I use, I use the word chaos, and it is chaotic, you have Google, you have uh, retargeting, you have Facebook ads, you have Yelp reviews, Google pages, uh, you get into print, uh, you got mailers, you got uh, banners, like you, you got community events, like it's the same thing. So you, now you get into the layer of how do you become successful as a, as a franchisee when it comes to marketing, it becomes complex. Um, I, I tell this story, I was at a franchisor conference uh, and they had the top three franchisees on stage. Um, and uh, one of them was middle of the pack the previous year. And the question was, well, how did you get here? And he said, and I, I re remember vividly, he said, I spent 10% of every dollar on marketing. And it was like, <gasps> and the, the, I'm sitting next to a franchisee and he elbows me in the side. He goes, that guy's an idiot. I'm like, he's on stage. He's number three in your system. So it's hard because I, I don't think it's that franchisees don't want to spend the money to market their business, it's that they don't know how. And that's where like, if we can take those two steps backwards, define, define the chaos, what, what works from a data standpoint across our system. So organize the chaos of, of marketing solutions and find a franchisor that can give you scaffolding in the departments that you might have some challenges. So I wanna frame it that way because, because now as, as we take, take a journey towards or through, what does it feel like to spend a day in the shoes of a franchisee? John, does any of that resonate with you? Um, and then how do you, how do you start solving that, um, as a franchisee? Oh man, there was a lot there, Nick. So Sorry. no, it's, it's all so good. And so much to think about. So, um, and again, I only, I can speak from our experience and I do network with a lot of other franchise organizations. So I do understand that we are a little bit more mature in, in this space. I, I just don't want to speak too much about um, really where we are because we've been doing it for a long time. So from a, from a franchisee perspective, I think um, before anybody signs on, we encourage them to call as many other franchisees as they can. And what we hear when we get back on the phone with them, with a new fran a new potential franchisee is that they really are understanding that being a franchisee with two men in a truck is sort of a business in a box for lack of a more creative term at this moment. Um, but really it is providing that, that framework. And I think, um, again, looking at what franchisees are telling us, we re recently went to a centralized consulting model where we have a group of consultants in all those areas you just mentioned. 
So in safety, risk, in operations, startups, uh, finance, recruiting and retention, and marketing, and they all sit together. And so when franchisee calls and says, I'm having a huge hurdle. I'm not meeting last year's numbers. I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. We have a, a group of people who can quickly dissect every point, every major component of the business and really um, narrow in on it's a conversion issue. It's a leads issue. You don't have enough guys. You're blocking trucks. So I think it, I know I've said this and I feel like I'm starting to sound like a broken record. It's that communication and expectation. So from a franchisee perspective, we want to help you focus on what you're not good at because we have brilliant franchisees, super successful business people that come from all different areas, all different walks of life, all different careers before they come here. And we just want to, we want to give them the opportunities, give them the tools, let them focus on, hey, I, I have no experience in hiring people. Please help. I don't know employment law. Um, I know that because of joint employer, I need to be responsible for it, but what tools do you have? So we try not to have these like big group calls where we're like spewing all the things to our new franchisees or to our established franchisees, but really focus in on building the relationships where the franchisee needs it the most. So I hope that answers your question from the franchisee standpoint. Um, we just really want to understand quickly where our franchisees want our support in terms of that operational standpoint and where they need it. In many cases, they're coming to us and giving us feedback and ideas from their expertise. So it's that two-way communication again. Yeah. So the, the insight from you, Don, is uh, as for, from a franchisor standpoint, be open to listening because it's not one size fits all. And based on the backgrounds of your franchisees who have all come from different walks of life, be willing to listen to how can you best put scaffolding around them. Um, Jessica, over to you. Like, when you're, when you're having these conversations with your franchisees and you're putting yourselves in their shoes and they're like, I want more clients or I want, I want more business. And you're saying do X, Y, or Z. Um, how, how are you navigating uh, that relationship? And what, what do you think it feels like to be a payroll vault uh, franchisee trying to communicate what they need? You know, we have gone to great lengths to, somebody had asked in the chat earlier about a pre-package uh, plan. When we onboard our franchisees, we set them up with a very basic uh, checklist and um, outline of what they should be doing right out of the gates. And then as their marketing matures, um, as their business is maturing and their reach is maturing, then we guide them and we actually outline a quarterly business development and marketing plan for them. So it is, it becomes more of a cut and paste. So we have a full library of communication templates that we develop, imagery to go along with it to ensure that it's within our brand standards and guidelines. And then we also outline um, the marketing messaging behind the sales focus for that quarter. So we go to great lengths to make sure that whether they want to outsource their, their marketing, they can. There are internal ways to outsource their marketing as well. But if they want to go it um, and do it themselves, we have the full outline in place for them and available at their fingertips. Love it. So one of the insights that come from you is, is as a franchisee, look, look at a system that is actually defined. And now it's up to me as a, as a franchisee to now go deploy that. Uh, deploy and it's that a great there. question. Sorry. Uh, yes, and that's. That's a great question because some franchise systems have um, different marketing needs. And so they're, we try to really instill into our franchisees that when you, when you buy into the payroll vault system, you are, you have full access to your director of marketing. I am their director of marketing. Um, and then as they, as their marketing needs mature or change, then we pivot with them to make sure that they have the tools, the resources, and the right vendors in place to work with. Love it. And to me, Michelle, like when, when you're hearing some of this, obviously now you, you, you built a solution that is that a franchisor is, is signing up to now deploy it. Now it's deployed over to the franchisee in their shoes. How does, how does your technology feel for them and how can they get the best use out of it? Yeah. So t typically uh, what we offer is a baseline, you know, of, um, of digital marketing tools and services, right? 
so our, our job is to fulfill the vision of the franchisers when it comes to digital marketing, right? Um, and, and so when we onboard their franchisees, obviously we are, we are very, very careful in terms of, of the way that, you know, we, we, we portray essentially the services, uh, the deliverables, uh, set the right expectations, right? Uh, from from a digital marketing standpoint, and um, and so uh, usually uh, they they feel uh, you know they are they are on this uh, on this uh, on those rails, right? Uh, so our team takes uh, takes the franchisee from uh, you know the onboarding process, with where they have to provide that their bio and and everything else, all the way all the way to you know a website you know creation. The optimization, all of the marketing positioning has been worked out already with the franchisors. The social profiles are getting created, and then we can add essentially the various packages that have been that have been agreed on, you know, either as a standard or options, right, uh, available to the franchisees. So the the idea there is is for them to realize that they bought into a system that does include the deep plan for digital marketing, right? It is an integrative part of the solution and um you know digital assets are, are important and increasingly so in, in 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 this world and and that's that's really what uh you know what what we try to to uh, to, uh, to to get across to to, to franchises um then typically we go more in, into a, a, an educational mode right uh, so obviously you you do deliver you do deliver on you know campaigns and those kind of things but uh, uh, over time, what we have is sequences of emails, text communications that introduce the franchisees to various co various concepts, and we found that to be uh, to be quite interesting because it, it is it is a very confusing world, right? There are lots of tools. O only on our platforms, we have over thirty different tools available, right? And so you can't you know push that on on uh, on you know everybody from day one, right? As Don uh, mentioned, you know the sophistication level there there. Their, 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 their digital marketing acumen or, or IQ is, is, is different, right? It varies on based on franchisee by franchisee, right? Um, so the ability to slice this into single uh, single messages and go over that educational process that way is, is, uh, is I think, very, very, very helpful. And then, obviously, the franchisor can organize, you know, webinars, different... Uh, Different topics, so that, that that is very much part of the of the solution, right? Uh, you know, software is only part of the solution. That you know, there is a big part of it that, that has to do with with how you use those tools, right? Great. So now let's dive into the the use of of, of the tools. And so, and, and, and this part as we swing into the second half of the webinar, now what we want to give is the key takeaways back to our franchisees or our franchisors that are are watching this whether you're watching it live now or you're watching it in the future uh, let's get into very specifics on how do we now go win at franchisee marketing so i'll i'll do some framework here so that you guys can think about some of the recommendations that you would make so the question the question is going to be uh, what 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 are you what's working what what do you see uh, taking off right now um, and as a franchisee uh, how can you best uh, drive your sales through marketing? So here, here's the framework. Um, I've always, I've always looked at brands, uh, and I, I got to put them into two buckets. One is getting the customer in, and then two is servicing the customer. And those are vastly different experiences, and they don't all fall on marketing. Now, some franchisors will blame marketing when there's no sales coming in. But you you also don't take a good look at the operations side to say well what happened when they got the customer in was it operationally sound to keep them engaged because really the the pathway to the the greatest amount of return is return usage or referrals from our existing base um, the American Marketing Association has this this uh, data point that 84 percent of deals uh, come from referrals. Uh, and a referral could be, I saw a two minute truck, truck on the road. So therefore I built a brand awareness of this. And I like that the person was driving the truck politely. I'm interested in that service. Or it could be uh, my friend used two men in a truck and they said, I absolutely need to do it uh, or use it. Or I read an awesome review uh, from someone that I didn't know, but I felt comfortable or confident that this was the, the right brand for me. So because the 84% is so important, that, that's a big operational thing. So some of the marketing spend, it's now what you can do with it. Uh, second point is um, I, I completely understand what it's like to feel like a franchisee 
um, in the, let's say you spent $5,000 on a radio remote and you're like, I got no sales out of that. We got to understand, like, even though the value of the impression is probably overinflated in the way that marketing agencies celebrate, we got you X impressions. Um, impressions take, take a while to cook. It's almost like boiling water. So some of the dollars that you spend today, you're not going to be able to completely judge the return on investment immediately. And that's just a part of how it works. So that's, therefore, when you're building out your budgets, you need to look at the collective and say, is this collective helping drive enough customers into my business uh, to, to have the benefit that, that I expected to, uh, expect to have? And then lastly, um, it's who's your, who's your target and what is the message that you're delivering to them? So there, there are brands, and I've, I've sat in a, a marketing advisory council meeting uh, where the franchisee said, our target is everyone from two to 99. I'm like, boy, you're going to need a lot of marketing dollars to get after everybody who's between two and 99. So the more specific you can get, and that's a question for franchisees to ask back to the franchisor, who should my target audience be? And, and what, can, what data can we pull from all these other franchisees um, that can tell me who I should be targeting, who's most likely to spend money with us, who's most likely to spend the most money with us, what is the average ticket for these demographics, and it can be, just be simply age group or, or sex. Um, so there's, there's a lot of things that you can pull out and now deploy in today's marketing resources, but those are some of the questions that you're going to want to ask. And then lastly is that why you, why now? Why, why you, why would anyone care about you and why would anyone care about you now? If that message is not clear when you're spending all these dollars on marketing, best of luck, then you're just a logo. And if you wanna see a great example of the why you, why now completely missing, go get on the highway and look at the billboards. And most of the time it's two or three words. It doesn't say why, then why now? The only thing that really defines why you, why now is almost a passive aggressive type of, of marketing. And that's the, the logos on the, on the exit signs, because why, why, why Burger King? Because I'm hungry. Why now? Because it's the next exit. It's very easy to see that pathway. So um, understand who your target is, deploy the right message, um, be willing to ask the questions would be the advice that I would have uh, for franchisees. And as you, as you guide into 2021, start writing down some of the goals that you want to achieve so you can work backwards and figure out that spend. So that, that's some framework. Hopefully I, I talked long enough for, for Don, Jessica, and Michelle to have some opinions too. Don, let's, let's start with you. Uh, if, if you're trying to give advice, franchisee, and it, it's a very open-ended, broad question, but hey, I need help with marketing. What should I do? Uh, what would you say is working now or what, what would be your advice on how to tackle that question? Well, it depends. So um, first, it depends for, for, I think, any brand. If you are already established in an area, I think that um, you have to really spend a lot of time digging into building your marketing plan. Um, but different tactics work differently, right? So I'm just going to play off of your example. Um, when we survey our customers who've used our service and we ask, how did they hear about us? Our top three referral sources nationwide are use the service or saw the truck or friend family referral. So all of those things take time to build. So I was recently having a conversation with a potential new franchisee who is going to go into an area where there is very, there's not another two minute truck for two hours, you know, any side of this particular market. So we had to talk about the expectations. So you are not going to get those top three for probably three years. You're not going to have soft friend family use service before for about three years. So then it's a, a different conversation, right? How to drive that brand versus going into an established market. So I think since most of our franchisees and probably most people listening are franchisees in brands that are established in their markets, I think the question you have to ask is what is my franchisor doing for me first? So what are the things I don't need to worry about for us specifically? Um, our, you know, there are a handful of things that our franchisees do not have to worry about, like understanding SEO. They don't need to worry about that because we have set up a model where they give us content and they write content and they kind of become their own SEO expert um, with our help. They don't have to worry about local PR, right? Because we're, we're paying for that. We are investing in that for them. So I think it's really important to ask, what is my franchisor doing that I don't need to worry about? 
Um, maybe it's graphic design. Maybe it is shooting those videos. I, I don't know. It's going to be different for everybody. Then you look at what can I, what can I do that matters most locally. So for us, the first thing I said for probably two years is the reviews. Read your reviews and respond to them. Zero dollars. It takes time. But when you go look at some brands that are in your space or even in, in, you know, in parallel spaces and you see people are not responding to those reviews, whether they're good or bad, I just, I like, I cannot stress enough how important it is to, for zero cost, go through and respond to re your reviews. Um, so that's really my first, that's always the first thing that comes to, to my mind because that is something a franchisor really can't do for you, right? I cannot respond to the fact that we broke Sarah's piano in, in Tulsa. I, I, that's going to take way too much time for a, a franchisor to understand all the nuances of that, even if you have a large customer care team. So I also can't build your brand locally for you from a grassroots perspective. The franchisor can't go and build relationships with your Keller Williams agents or your Remax agents, or you know, if you own a a food franchise. We can't put a float in a local parade. We can't sponsor the high school baseball team. We can't do that. Um, that we, we can't run your charitable giving programs for you. We can set up a framework to help you, but that's relationships, boots on the ground, investing again, time, not a lot of money, but the things that really a franchisee has to do um, oftentimes are, are more time heavy in, in a brand like two men in a truck. We're going to take care of those top level things and set up your framework, but you're going to have to invest the time. Um, so those are a couple of the, the tactics. It's really that grassroots, being in your community, responding to those reviews to help drive those leads, as long as the operational and the conversion, the sales conversion stuff is being handled. But Nick, to your point, in our centralized consulting model, oftentimes it isn't a leads issue. It's a conversion issue. So make or you have a counterpart that can help you understand if it's a lead issue or a conversion issue is important as well. Uh, I want to take this opportunity to apologize to Sarah in Tulsa for that broken piano. That was not two men in a truck. It was just an example. Tom's movers. <laughs> Tom's movers. Uh, Jessica, question over to you. Sa same thing. What, what, what advice? You're at, you're at a cocktail event and franchisees like, help me. I need help with my marketing. Uh, what would you recommend to them? You know, we have tried to be very forward and everybody's initial want from a franchisee perspective is to throw this big wide marketing net and to see kind of what comes in from that. We have defined what our top growth strategies would be from a marketing standpoint, whether it is a lead generator, business development, um, to kind of piggyback on what Don was saying, making sure that you have um, that relationship building in place you know, from building that referral network. So we help our franchisees define which one or two of those growth strategies that they're going to benefit from in their local community and what they're most comfortable with. And then our, our CEO has gone through and worked with our director of sales and put together KPIs that will help them understand this is the bare minimum of what I need to do to get X results. And from there, we can move forward. And if I really want to drive this home, then I can go an extra step above. And we've tried to make it to where, what do you want to focus on? And then let's use that with our business development and marketing sales strategy for that quarter. And let's really tailor this to your local community. And then let's look at who your local community is and then let's figure out who is your buying, what type of businesses and industries, and let's get that imagery set up for you. And then it does become a checklist item. They have all the tools we've gone through, we worked through and refined it with them as far as what people need to see and hear in their local community. And we've also narrowed their approach to how they're going to get these leads and help with the conversion aspect of it. So it's really about the education piece, narrowing that focus and understanding who your buyer is. Thank you for that. And Michelle, over to you. Uh, advice to franchisees who want to better market their business. Yeah. So t t typically, franchisees are, are, are interested in a, in a, you know direct acquisition strategies, right? As as Jessica and Don men mentioned, obviously, you know you, you can't expect everything from the franchisor, 
um, you know, they, you know, they, 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 they can be uh, engaged at a, at a, at the micro level with the community, but they can give you the tools uh, to enable that engagement on your part, right? Um, so, so that you can showcase essentially your work on social media, for instance, right? So you can do this with apps, with, with different different tools. Um, and then when it comes to campaigns, um, you know, typically what we found is uh, it will be the most uh, the most effective at the franchisee level is to uh, boost and promote uh, uh, promote uh, uh, you know post that actually contains a, a, an offer, right? So something that is that is very very specific, right? Um, because those audiences on social networks gets depleted very very quickly at the local level because you are not dealing with with lots of people, so you saturate very very quickly. And uh, if you're on a, on, a, on, a, on a very basic messaging, you need to renew that messaging over and over very very quickly, so it becomes very time you know very, very intensive, right? So uh, offers, you know, specific offers uh, are, are great for that um, uh, because they, they tend to, to to give you an answer very very quickly as per whether this is working for you, right? And if it works today or for the next three days, it's great. Uh, and, and keep in mind that that it might not actually offer the same return on investment, you know, six days from now because of that of that uh, of that uh, of that depletion effect on, of that fatigue uh, that comes from this uh, you know social uh, social network presence, right? Um, what else would I say? I would say reclaim some of the budget, right? We are at the end of the year. It's it's a perfect timing essentially to you know take a look at what what you've done. Um, um, what we found uh, by experience by looking at uh, at PPC accounts, right, pay per click accounts, AdWords accounts, is you know lots of the budgets are getting wasted, um, and, and, and there is a very easy uh, uh, trick uh, to 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 see at a glance, right, whether you're wasting a lot of of your budget. You know, number one, you need to make sure that you have access to those accounts, right. So you need to require transparency from your from your provider, right. And number two, once you get access and get into those accounts. Take a look at the keywords at the search terms, right? If you look at the search terms, those are the actual queries that people are using, right, to find, to actually see your ads, right, and click your ads, right? And so if you see lots of keywords here that are irrelevant to your business, chances are that you are wasting a lot of your budget, right? So the first part would be to reclaim the waste so that you can reallocate it, you know, towards productive, uh, uh, productive endeavors. Yeah, I mean, the, the key insight there, Michelle, is that for franchisees, you still have to keep optimizing. As much as you want to set something up and forget it, if you don't take a step backwards and, and relook at what's working and what's not, it's going to be hard to win uh, as you as you make adjustments. Well, yeah, okay, yeah. So well, yeah go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was saying, you know, the things. Uh, I mean, it's 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 a, it's, a, it's a lot of hard work these days, right? Because you know, it's it's not uh, it's not 1997 anymore. Uh, you know, there is lots of competition out there, so it takes it takes refinement, right? You need to refine that formula. Uh, what works this year is not necessarily going to work next year as well. Um, so you need to take that into 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 account. Absolutely, yeah. Okay, so we're gonna go. We're gonna play the crystal ball game now to to close us out, and I'm gonna actually reverse the order now. So Don, you go last. Michelle, you're gonna go first. Jessica, you get to hang out in the middle. Um, so we're gonna look into this crystal ball, and we're gonna look into 2021 on, on what works and and what could potentially change. Um, if if I'm looking into 2021, uh, here here are my pieces of advice for for franchisees. Uh, one is radio, as much as radio continues to be tempting, take the insight that more people are working from home and probably not listening to that radio. So make sure that you have some sort of insight that if you're going to deploy a budget into radio, that you're doing it with purpose. Now, if, if it was pre-COVID, um, I would always buy around, around weather and traffic because that's the thing that people remember and when to click into the radio and listen to those things. But the radio advertising may have shifted. It could have shifted more into uh, satellite radio that's playing in the background, but be smart about the way that you're uh, deploying the budget. Um, secondly, I think social media is gonna continue to become less social and more media. That means if you want your Facebook posts to get the interaction or return on investment of the time that you put in posting it, you're going to have to put money against it. So I do think there's going to actually become an exodus of local pages on a Facebook, um, on an Instagram, on a Twitter for franchisees because of the time and money and energy that it takes to manage those things and potentially the lack of return unless you're willing to put more of that, that first category in there. So if I'm predicting 2021, it's going to get very specific on who's my target, 
and how much am I spending to go after that target? And then secondly, I think there's going to be a, a large shift in, in the, our approach to how we look at social media, that it's going to sway back more to the franchise or managing that on my behalf. Because if, let's say, there's 50 franchisees who are each willing to spend $100 a month on Facebook ads, a $5,000 Facebook buy could go a lot farther against a, a strong offer than $50, $100 ad buys. So there's going to be some sort of uh, consolidation, in, in my opinion, as I look. 2021. Uh, Michelle, uh, you're looking into the crystal ball. What what do you predict for 2021? Well, the, you know, the first the first six months are going to be uh, are going to be uh, extremely uh, digital, right? Uh, you know, nine, nine months ago, actually, I, I, I did play that game of the crystal ball, right? And I was uh, uh, you know I was predicting ba based on a, on a study that that we were going into on off type of waves, right? That's exactly what what happened. Now now you know the next six months are you know still going to be you know, a lot of work from home as well. So it's going to be very digital. If you, if you talk about radio, you know, Spotify would be would be uh, definitely a channel for that. You know, uh, you know, as as a as the uh, you know the digital uh, end of uh, of uh, of things. Um, then I, what what I would expect is is you know in in a, in, a, in the following six months uh, something that uh, that um, where, where um, uh, uh, you know outdoor advertising right is going to come back with a, with a, with a, with a vengeance right uh, because I can imagine that that uh, you know six months from now everybody uh, everybody will want to be uh, to be out and uh, out and about right so right now might actually be the right time to position yourself. To actually purchase inventory for the second part of the year, right? Because right now, those all those companies they are suffering, right? And this might be a good time to actually cut deals with them, right? Uh, so that would be my that would be my take for the you know digital versus uh, versus uh, physical um, uh, physical world. As far as digital is concerned, a, a couple of tactics very 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 quickly. I think um, I think one of the things that we found that works extremely well are uh, micro targeted uh, landing pages, right? Uh, so micro-targeted landing pages within the territory they work extremely well. So you you go you go closer and closer essentially to the to the to, to the people actually you know uh, making those search. You can apply the same tactic as well to paid accounts, right? It's not because you you, you don't draw that that big circle around your territory. Draw multiple multiple circle, multiple concentric circles, right? Multiple circles all around, right? So that you can bid effectively, you know, for the. Uh, um, uh, for, for for the leads that are most uh, you know closest to you, uh, most valuable to you because of the area, you know those kind of tactic work works extremely extremely well, right? Um, what else? I, I, I would say I would say that from from you know wh whether you're a franchisee or a franchisor, right? The name of the game when it comes to digital, right, is to fight the the giants that want to intermediate their way within your business, right? So that works for generic generic type of traffic, but it works also for your brand, right? You can see it. You can see it when you are typing your own brand that some people try to intermediate their way in the relationship between you and your customers, right? And so then, then they turn around and they try to sell you those leads, right? And so uh, my recommendation is to pay a lot of, lot, lot of attention to this, uh, to, 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 to this trend. And so one way to fight it off is, uh, is you know, you know, to have the right, the proper, you know, CRM tools, you know, in place, in place, right? So the customer nurturing the customer relationship is is uh, is uh, is uh, is totally uh, is totally critical at uh, at this stage, so that you don't end up paying essentially to 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 get your customers back. Or you get a whole bunch of your friends to go click on your competitor ads so that they stop buying your terms. Yeah, the, the, the algorithm for that. You, you, you know, we, we we heard lots of uh, we heard we, we heard actually we 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 see those kind of things. You know, especially coming from franchisees that are worried that you know some guys in India are actually uh, clicking uh, you know uh, clicking their ads all the time, and this is why their website goes down and all those kind of stories and what's not. Typically, they turn out to be um, you know. To no, not being uh, not being uh, verifiable, right? Um, but but usually when we look into those accounts, that's why we see we see lots of waste, you know, wasted clicks and budget, right? And that's that's much closer to home, and that is much more reality in in you know ninety percent of the of the cases we see. Yeah, great great advice. And the, the outdoor thing, I think, is a tremendous piece of advice for anybody that's that 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 type of advertising buy would be specific to your business. Uh, take what Michelle said. Uh, look at pre-buying those now when they're, they're the, the sellers of those ads uh, could use some uh, revenue, which means the negotiations might be more sound for you. Great piece of advice. And Jessica, advice, uh, things that you're seeing in your crystal ball for 2021? 
You know, with the ongoing work from home and remote, video is going to be huge because people are still going to be craving those interactions. And even though the in-person is still going to be limited, it's really trying to even going past you know, the Zoom meetings, because I know that we've all just about been Zoomed out. It's still, they want to feel like they are having conversations with you one-on-one. -on -one. And so video is going to be huge in 2021. And making sure that it's short, concise, and that your messaging is clear. And to kind of go back to what Michelle was saying, make sure it's micro-targeted. So make that really nice, personable video. And it doesn't have to be a polished video. People want to see that interaction. They want to see the imperfection of that interaction in a lot of cases coming up for the next year. That would be my number one takeaway for that. I uh, love it. We've clearly missed the boat on the short video side, but maybe maybe in the next webinar we can do it in like 15 minutes or less. But uh, great advice. And look, like you can turn on the news. Uh, I happen to have CNBC on the background. And right now there's, there's a Skype interview going on or a Zoom interview going on. So like, I think we've become uh, less apologetic for what our backgrounds look like or the sounds that are made in our background. And this is a part of life and th therefore the high quality material doesn't necessarily uh, have, have to be a must when it comes to franchisees. And Dawn, take us home. Predictions for 2021. All right. I have a couple. Um, first, uh, first prediction is that um, customer experience is going to continue to matter like it has never mattered before. Um, Doing what you say you're going to do moving forward is going to be more important than ever before. When we look at what we have learned in running businesses and interacting with customers in a pandemic, um, if you're showing guys wearing masks in your commercials and on your Facebook posts, your guys better show up in masks if they're movers. I think really paying attention to your content and making sure that it all ties together is going to be critical. And I don't think that's going to go away. I think there are some things that we have learned that aren't going away. And this is one of them. Um, I also think that local matters. So we are all franchisees or franchisors, which in most cases mean we are part of a larger network. People assume that we are corporately owned. We aren't. We are locally independently owned and operated. Getting this message out is huge. You see it in the restaurant industry, who's been, obviously, everyone knows, hit tremendously hard. And in that service industry, that local service industry, continuing to drive messaging around what you're doing in your community, providing jobs, supporting the Little League, giving back to your women's shelter is going to be critically important next year because people are, are not going to stop caring about that. Um, and then lastly, um, marketing mix matters. It still matters. I predict that people are going need to try to put a bunch of dollars in in one slice of the marketing budget and that's a it's a mistake i think making sure you are spreading your dollars out that meet your strategy in that great marketing mix and um if you're not doing some sort of streaming advertising in whether it's uh ott podcast um spotify there are so many ways to you nick you talked about radio we talked about out of home um, I think that streaming is only going to get bigger. And if you're not doing that today, figure out a way to advertise in some sort of meet your customers where they are in, in invest your dollars. I think predict that people need to do a better job investing dollars in measurable to get measurable results. Um, very similar to other things that we've talked about, but we don't want to just throw a, a, an ad up on our local CBS affiliate during the news anymore. We really need to understand where those dollars are going. So I predict that will be more important moving forward. Love it. Uh, great advice from our panel. Um, and for anybody that's that's watching this either in real time or in the future, uh, this is probably going to become dated fairly quickly. If we if we haven't learned anything from today's discussion, is things are are constantly changing. Uh, this is, as Michelle said, this is not 1997, where if we flash back, marketing may have been. Uh, easier, but probably if we flash back to 97, these same conversations we're having, like marketing is hard. Marketing is hard and and find what works best for you. There, there is some truth to, to you getting out there and shaking hands and kissing babies. Not today, once the vaccine is all the way through, but uh, hopefully uh, you got one takeaway as franchisees or franchisors on this webinar. I very appreciative to our panel. I wish you all the best of holidays and look forward to continuing this conversation next year. Thanks, everybody.